Okay, so let's do this. Let's uh, play with fractions. We'll start simply by adding fractions. So going over the notes, um, when we have one third plus two thirds, if the denominator is the same, it stays the same. It's already done it. And then we can just add the two numerators together. 1 plus 2 is 3. And if we have 3 out of 3, it is also known as a whole number. 1. So that's when the denominators are the same. What if they're different? What do we do if they're different? So let's say it's 1 over 3 and 2 over 4. And we needed to add them together. What's the strategy there? We can't add them unless these two denominators are the same. So we need to convert them. And we do this by what I call ratio. So we need to find the lowest common multiple, LCM, of both of these fractions or both of these denominators. So the lowest common multiples go like this. What do both of these numbers multiply together with um, that is the same number, right? So let's go through our multiples uh, of 3. 1 times 3, 3, yeah? 2 times 3, 6. 3 times 3 equals 9. 4 times 3 equals 12. Let's leave it at 12, and here's why. Let's do number, let's do the 4. So 1 times 4 equals 4. 2 times 4 equals 8. 3 times 4 equals 12. Now, can you see that here and here we have both 12? That is the lowest common multiple. So, we can convert 1 over 3 plus 2 over 4 to over 12 here and over 12 here. And we're adding them together. We know that it's going to equal 12 as the denominator. But... We can't just add 1 plus 2 because we've scaled up both of these fractions. So we need to learn now how to scale the numerators up. And here's how you do it, okay? Firstly, and this is, will help you with your ratios too, 3 times something equals 12. Now when we were doing it back here, we figured out that 3 times something or something times 3, which is the same, equals 12. We go down, oh, here it is. The magic number is 4. So 3 times 4 equals 12. Now with these fractions and ratios, we have to do the same thing to the top as we did to the bottom. So it's going to be 1 multiplied by 4. 1 multiplied by 4 is 4. So 4 over 12 is the same as saying 1 over 3. It's the same ratio. Yeah? So if you were to ask, um, if you were to get asked to simplify 4 over 12 to a simpler fraction, the answer would actually be 1 over 3. But this time we're making it bigger so that we can add these two fractions together. Right? Let's do the next one. What is 4 multiplied by to get 12? Did you have 3 as the answer? You're correct. So 4 times 3 equals 12. And again, whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So 2 times by 3 will equal 6. So we've got 6, right? We're done. Or are we done? Let's add these two together to get our final answer. 4 plus 6 equals 10. And there we have it. 10 over 12. But let's simplify it. How do we simplify 10 over 12? We need to make it into a smaller number. The way that I go about it is work through my uh, singular numbers. We don't use 1 because 1 divided into 10 is 10. Nothing's happened. Uh, 1 divided into 12 is 12. Okay? What about 2? 2. Can 2 divide into 10? The answer is yes, because 10 is an even number. How many times does 2 Go into 10. Let's go old school. We can even use fingers here. 10. 
two, four, six, eight, ten. Five is your answer. So we have five. What about twelve? Let's use our fingers again. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Six. So the answer is six. And that's how you add numbers or fractions that have a um, that don't have a common denominator. So step one, find the lowest common multiple, L, C, M, remember that, and then you can add them. Once you add them, make sure that you scale the fractions the same way as you do with the denominator to the numerator. And that's how you do it. Okay, next bit, next bit. Now again, if that's going too quick, you can always pause it, rewind the video, and watch it again. Okay? So, what about subtraction? Let's say we have uh, four-fifths take away three-fifths. If the denominator is the same, the denominator stays the same. And we can do four take three, yeah? Taking away the numerators, four take three equals one. One over five is the answer. That's easy. But because we're in high school, we need to get a little bit more challenging. Let's make it four over five, take away three over, uh, let's go with six. Three over six. Four over five, take three over six. Yeah? So first thing we need to do is we need to make these two numbers the same. We need to make a lower find the lowest common multiple of the denominators. So let's do that. One times five, five. Two times five, ten. Three times five, fifteen. Four times five equals twenty. Who's getting a bit of uh, a recall from primary school when we're doing our times tables? This is why. Five times five, twenty-five. And then six times five equals 30. Now I could just keep going if I wanted to, but let's stop at six, okay? Let's do our six times tables. One times six, six. Two times six, 12. Three times six, 18. Four times six, 24. Five times six, 30. Ah, there it is. There's our number. Now, I purposely stop at 30 because I know that's the lowest common multiple, but I've been doing this forever. I'm old. So, let's have a look. Let's convert this to 30 here, take away 30 here, and then we'll have our answer here, over 30. What are our uh, numerators gonna be? Well, let's have a look. How do we get from five to six? Sorry, five to 30. We multiplied by six. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. Four times six. Oh, we got that here. This is an easy answer. 24. That was easy. Yeah. And what about this one? Oh, six to 30. How do we get from six to 30? Oh, we multiplied by five. Five times uh, six equals 30. And then we have to multiply this one by five. Don't get confused because that's the six that we use and we multiply by five. That's our number, so times five. And whatever we do to this one, we do to the top as well, so times by five. That's where we get the number from. Three times five equals 15. Excellent. So that is the same as that, but with common denominators. Let's finish the problem. 24 take 15 is? Well, let's have a look. Let's do it here, just in case you forgot how to subtract. Four, take five, you can't do. Borrow the one, carry the four. 14, take five, equals nine. And then one take one equals zero. Our answer is nine. So our answer here is nine over 30. Now, can we simplify that fraction? Let's go. We're gonna ignore the one. We're going to go to the 2. Can 2 divide evenly into 9? No, it can't. Can 3 divide evenly into 9? Yes, it can. And before we continue, we're going to make sure that 3 can divide into 30 evenly as well. Yes, it can. How many times? Let's use our fingers. 
Three goes into nine. Three, six, nine. Three. There's the first one. What about 30? Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. 10. There's our answer. Three over 10. Woo! Okay. We've done it. We've done it. We've got our answer. Yay! Okay. So, now we've done that, we're going to look at the next stop. Okay, the next problem. You're going to get a problem that looks like this. Now, I'm going to go a little bit quicker and skip the finding the lowest common denominator. Okay, so let's say we have 5 over 6 plus, and then in brackets, what's the number that I've set up? Uh, negative 7 over 9. Okay, now what we can do here is first that we need to find the lowest common multiple. I'm going to skip a step and I'm going to tell you straight away that that equals 2 um, over 18. Over 18, over 18, okay, and the top two numbers are going to be 15 and 14. and 14. So from here, we need to know what the middle bit is. Now, because we have a plus and a minus, we need to convert that. Now, when we're adding a negative, we're actually subtracting, okay? So we have 15 and 14. The plus and minus, if you remember your integers from year seven, is actually a take away. So we have a takeaway here. So the answer is 1 over 18. Okay, done, done. That's the first one. Now, another way to do that is, I'm just going to get these notes here. Let's say, let's say we have a common, let's say we have a common denominator. Okay, let's make it a little bit easier. Let's say we have 3 over 5 plus, and then brackets, uh, minus 1 over 5, so it's a minus altogether, yeah, so lo uh, same thing. Now, quick tip, minus 1 over 5 equals minus 1 over 5 like this, equals 1 over minus 5. They're all the same, okay, but let's make it the top one. Let's use this one as an example, okay, so... We're going to rewrite this like this. So 3 over 5 plus negative 1 uh, over 5. And then when it comes to our um, coding, let's call it coding, it actually looks like this. Uh, 3 plus negative 1 over 5. Because when we have a common denominator, remember... It stays the same. And then we have 3 plus negative 1. And when we're adding a negative, we're actually taking it away. This here becomes a negative. 3 take 1 is 2 over 5. And that's your final answer. Okay? Done. Next bit. Next bit. Next bit. All right. Now, this is my favorite bit. I prefer this over the addition and subtraction. All right? Let's erase this. Let's go for the multiplication. Now, I'm just going to check if we've still got time for this recording. Yes, plenty of time. We're 14 minutes in. And if you're already stuck, feel free to go back and try again. We're going to go with multiply first. Multiply. Okay. With multiplying fractions, there's actually less work involved. Okay. So let's say we have 3 over 5 multiply by 2 over 4. Okay. All you have to do is multiply both numerators and in brackets I'm going to put top. And then also multiply both denominators, which is the bottom numbers. Done. Now, if you're still quite confused with what all those words are, let's label it. 
a half. That's the numerator, and that's the denominator. Okay, I probably should have done that at the very beginning of the lesson, but here we go, we've unlocked it. Now, if you're less confused, you can go all the way back to the start and go for it. Okay, so multiply both numbers, the top. So we're gonna multiply these two together, okay? Anytime you see this set up, three times two is six. That's the top number. And then four times five, or five times four, is 20. There's our number. Let's simplify it. How many times does two go into six? Three. And how many times does two go into 20? Done. Done. So there's our first one. That's how you multiply. That's it. The end. The end. I'm going to do one more for negatives. I'm going to do one more for negatives. Okay? So for the negatives, let's say we have negative 1 over 5 multiplied by 2 over 3. Okay? Now remember, 1 over 5 negative is equal to negative 1 over 5 as well. So let's write it like that. Let's make that a little bit easier. Let's get rid of this and do that. We can do that. We're allowed to do that. Now remember from the notes here, if you didn't write them down, rewind this about a minute and copy those notes down. That's the beauty of video. We multiply the top two together. Now, negative one times two, what do you think the answer is? It's actually negative two, okay? Now, a, here's some more notes for you if you haven't um, figured it out. A negative, multiplied by a positive will give you a negative. And also the other way around, because remember, three times four is also four times three. So therefore, positive times a negative is also a negative. There are two more. Can you figure them out? Pause the video and see if you can write them down. And unpause. Negative times a negative is actually a positive, okay? It's like a two wrongs make a right sort of thing. And then a positive times a pos uh, positive equals a positive. Remember those. Those will be with you throughout your maths career, all throughout high school. There it is. Now, let's go back to this. That's correct because negative one, negative, times a positive. Now, we know that's a positive because there's no pluses or minuses in front of that. We don't need to put a plus in there because we're automatically going to know that it's a positive. That's the rule, okay? Positive equals a negative. That's why we wrote negative two. And we know our ones times tables. We know our two times tables. One times two is two. And that's why we put the negative there. Right, next one. Five times three. Five, that's a positive. Times three, that's also a positive. Oh, that's not it. Positive, positive, positive. So the answer is going to be a positive. 5 times 3 is 15. We're done. That's our answer. And you can do that in any way, whether it's here, whether it's here, any way. Just as long as you follow these laws. Okay? Right? Last one. Let's do divide. Divide isn't that much harder, but you have to remember three words. Keep change and flip so let's have a look at this problem one divide uh, one over five divided by two over three now here's where the words come in label this keep which means leave it alone leave it alone don't do anything this one is change. What are we changing it to? To multiply. Done. Change to multiply. So from this to this. Okay? And then this last one. Flip. They're the three magic words. Keep, change, and flip. We can also Use the word swap. Swap over, swap around, rotate, whatever words you want to use. So the two and the three become the three and the two. Okay? Let's write all of that here based off of what you just learned. 
Right, so first step, first number, one over five. What does it tell me? Keep, leave it alone, okay? I'll leave it alone, I'll keep it like it is, one over five. What's the next step? Change, to multiply. Oh, we've got to change this, oh, this to this. Okay, I'm gonna write that here, done. Last one, flip, swap over, two over three. Ooh, three over two. See how we've just rotated them around? Done. Oh, I know how to do this. This is just multiply. You just multiply the tops and the bottoms. One times three is three. Five times two is 10. Done. Drop the mic, we're finished. How are we? Cool, let's move on. Yeah? Okay, last one. Last one, and I'm going to do negatives, okay? I'm going to do negatives and division. This is as hard as it gets for now. Let's use some different numbers. Let's go with oh, two divided or over eight. Let's make it a negative eight. Let's make it, let's make it half. And then we'll go negative three over four. All right, so what do we do here? Keep, leave it alone. Okay, I'll just write it again. That was easy. Change the multiply. Ooh, that was easy. Uh, flip, swap over. Okay, negative three and four. So the four now goes on top and the negative three goes on the bottom. Again, we've just rotated. And now let's do it. Ooh, we have to just multiply the top and the bottom. Two times four, that's easy. Eight. Oh, what about negative eight times negative three? Oh, what happens? If you don't know, if you're not sure, rewind it a few minutes, go back to when, when I had the positive and negative notes. But if you've written them down, well done. So you know that now a negative times a negative equals a positive. So eight times three, eight, 16, 24. There's our answer. Can we convert this? Yeah, we can. Two goes into eight how many times? Four. Two goes into eight, uh, two goes into 24 how many times? 12. Can we convert that? Absolutely. Two goes into four how many times? Twice. Two goes into 12 how many times? Six. Can we convert that? Oh, yeah, why not? Why not? Why not? Two goes into twice, sorry, two goes into twice once. Two goes into six times, three times. One third. Could we have done this quicker instead of doing these? Yes, this is how. What goes into eight and what goes into 24 evenly? The number four. How many times does four go into eight? Twice. How many times does four go into 24? Six times. So we could skip that step, okay? And then they're both even still, so two goes into two once, two goes into two three times. Ladies and gentlemen, we are done with fractions. That's how you do it. Thanks for tuning in. You've been a wonderful audience. Good night.